Piss flaps. <clears throat> Welcome back to the land of retreads and inbreds. We got a giant pile of fucking Ford here that we have to cut up and turn into a uh, into a race truck. It's not uh, not something I normally do on this channel, but uh, figured might as well fucking give her because uh, I mean you're not gonna not drag race. So there have been a bunch of guys that have been giving me hint, hints and help and hint jobs with the hole on how to make this thing go fast in an eighth mile and all the rest of the fucking. Sh you know what? This will decimate all after. You put about 15 grand in it or more. But uh, what they don't realize is all they really want to do is do a f load of burnouts, <laughs> kill a f load of tires, <laughs> and uh, drink a f load of beers. I want to watch. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? And go hang out with my buddy DD Speed Shop and single drive and fucking uh, Shade Tree Mechanical. So all we have to do is give it a f a little horsepower, switch it over to diesel, swap tranny out, cross member, radiator, rear diff, traction bars, and all the stupid shit. Barely any work, right Matt? Barely any work. 15 minute job. And we're getting an early start, I mean it's only like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Alrighty, well first things first, we gotta strip this old hoover down. This is the last fucking time the old mill in this old sucker's gonna run. So, we gotta strip that off we're gonna strip the box off uh we want to keep the box as intact as possible i know it's pretty f but uh you know it's got that patina look to it that's what they call it nowadays it's not a rotten piece of sh it's, it's patinaed so yeah we're gonna f pull the box off fenders off we're gonna pull the whole front clip off so we can fiddle f shit in and out of the hole here that's what she said so like i said before we got a measure between the back of the firewall there i think she's notched out a little bit already with for a 306 but we got her 42 inches from there to this side of the rad support and the cummins from hold the brisket is uh, 36 inches so we do have quite a bit of room i might run a mechanical fan i might run an electric fan i don't know yet but uh we'll figure that out when, when the time comes first things first we got to pull the uh one might call patina covered box off oh man it smells like you just oh, fresh dirt mm. yeah <laughs> fresh ass now there's one one bolt there yeah we'll just get rid of the heads off those suckers those are the only ones that aren't rotted right through matt for some reason this tire is not holding wind anymore it might be the weather cracks no that's your fault yeah 2020 no accountability everything is not my fault i'm a liberal now yeah <laughs> one of the last times she's gonna be running such a sad thing in all those years of service oh that's sad i feel like we should bury it or something <laughs> boxes off i think the rear tank had a little bit of a leak eh a little bit uh, it probably would still held gas it's fine all right one, one more burnout one more burnout all right all right that was her last burnout with a fucking dirty old 1203 fired mill in her Next step, diesel. I mean, that tank's still mint. It's not even that rotten. This cinder's pretty good. The sending is not cinder. All right, well, deconstruction's going good. That bird is some up. I think I got it on the way home. All right, so, um, we're gonna try to pull this whole front clip in one piece. Keep giving her. Well, we are not around. The old bird is uh, a shell of herself. Now all we gotta do is delete this giant pile of board and then uh, get rid of the exhaust. Bruce 
and then we can start building. Well, I guess after a little bit of a pressure washer action. All right, now comes the motor. I said no, Bo. No! I thought you said go, Bo, go. All right, there, fing keto crotches and mouth breathers. The pile of fing is fing clean. <clears throat> Pressure washed the fing out of it last night. Looking fing mint. <clears throat> this is like the nicest fing work I've ever done, I reckon. But I got a pretty good cut on. I just came from a dump. Today's a good fing day. Looking down her fing frame rails. I'm also looking at someone who's fing stunned. And uh, looking down her frame rails, what her off. Oh. And if you, with her, you're stunned. And if you look at that pinion right there, kind of to the left of fucking bit. And the fuel tank is right in the fucking way, so we can't run the front fuel tank. So that fucking sucks. So we're gonna be putting fuel in this thing every 15 fucking minutes. We gotta get a new rear fuel tank for it. This fucking cross member, I think I'm gonna have to do a delete on that mother which I don't really give a about. You don't. You don't even need that cross member. I gotta get rid of that. Maybe. Well, I'm gonna take out both of these fuel tanks. Obviously, maybe, I might need a new rear one. I might. I might just get some JV weld. Work some magic on that. But uh, yeah. So that's the fucking plan for that. Shit. Um, and keep on giving her. I got uh, all the shit to do. I haven't even fired up the welder yet. And uh, we got. Oh, it's the 21st today. For six. So oh, it's little man's birthday. <laughs> That's my godchild. Just a good kid. But yeah, so I gotta get that dialed in. So I got, what is it? Nine. So I got about 19 days to get this thing done. So we got lots of times. Time to start drinking and procrastinating. <laughs> I mean, I got like 10 beer in me now. Now it's time to run heavy equipment. Usually the mentally retarded are divided into classifications. That was easy. <laughs> it throws it in the door. <laughs> Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so we got the fuel tank out of it. I'm not even that drunk, and I got that mock block. So now we just need the bell housing adapter. And uh, yeah, this is to clear it up. You don't have to adapt a fucking shitty Dodge to a Minty 4. The 6BT platform has everything involved. It's got nothing on the back, absolutely nothing. You take this bell housing off, you put a Ford, you put a Chev, you put a fucking shitty Dodge, any of that stuff on there, and then she's meant to But uh, we're gonna put a uh, bell housing adapter off this sucker on the mock block so we can bolt the roof to it and then uh line everything up and get the motor out half ass put in there all right so you see on the back of a sassy old 6bt the, the rear structure does not matter i just bolted this on so there's only eight bolts on either side that matter and i can smell that on your breath i've been drinking so then this structure holds on so we are going with a jet rag because that's all the I got jet rag it is and then so we're just gonna bolt it up to the mock block put the bruce on there and stick her home so when you hear the word adapter plate you're not really adapting fuck all it's just a, you put a, a, a c6 on there a c4 a 700 r4 well chevy's all the same isn't it yeah chevy's all the same you put whatever the fuck you want on there they make all kind of adapters if you want adapters you go to uh diesel conversion specialist those mother First got your back. I think his name was Dave that I talked to. And he, he shucked my car over the phone and he's a good guy. All right, a few hair lips are doing a Bruce swap and a, I'm, I'm pretty drunk. 131 proof bud straight up. I'm fucking wasted. Oh, dialing the left hand he's in here. All right, so if you guys are dialing one of these mock blocks in here, put her right at the back of the fucking block and then be able to tilt it and then get the fucking weight you need. All righty. So what we've discovered, but this is an industrial style oil pan with the industrial style pickup. So instead of the sump being on the back, the sump is on the front. So what'll happen is, what we got is when we stick her in the hole, and these Fords are f***ed, the engine in a f***ing Ford is way off to the passenger side. So what we're going to do to get her all the way back, so we have maximum room between the rad support and the front of the mill, is we're going to cut the cross member over here, all the way down. Cut her here, all the way across here, and up. So the oil pan had all kinds of room to spit in there. Are we reminiscing? Huh? We're, re we're reminiscing about yeah, things that never same happened. Yeah, Lake reminiscence. Same, same, we never used Slave Lake for legal activities, did we? No, no, no. no. We never did. We burned us on mattress piles at <laughs> 1 o'clock in the morning in the dump or nothing. These, allegedly, they never happened. Yeah. <laughs> Why did they put that fence up? I don't know. It's some 
Cool. All right, so we got this cut in here and we're thinking um with all the spring travel in the world you're still not gonna hit the pan as long as we're not all the way to the back of this so as long as we're this far away from that pan should be good and yeah it looks like we're standing on one leg as far as how we cut that in the cross member but forward you'll notice that this here lines up perfectly with the firewall so these forwards everything was to the passenger side if you don't believe me what do we got here matt what do we got there to that edge of that uh, uh bell housing tub well after the frame roller eight and a quarter eight and a quarter and on this side what two inches yeah so yeah he's way the over to the pad on your side. No, they did not intend on people's old ladies being like one ton tanyas back in the day. So fat, the blood type is red goo. But Jenny holds ass. She's gotta make two trips. And they all work for a living. And they made their men sandwiches instead of them making like 500 sandwiches for themselves. No in this truck, I guess, because the engine's gonna be sitting over there. I'll be, I'll be fat enough. I can sack it on the driver's side. Alrighty, we'll see you the next day. I'm a little hungover, but no big deal. Oh, you're having a bad day? Did you die? Eating some five cent candies because they're f***ing mint. Uh, so I went and found this, I found a bunch of this steel a long time ago. It was getting thrown out. A bunch of f***ing six inch flat bar, half inch. So what we're gonna do is uh, build a plate that goes down to here on each side and then top over here. And then we're able to get our spacing for uh, how high the mill has to be. So you should be able to come right off the bottom here, come over to here, and then just put some kind of a isolator between the frame and the piece of metal. And then I'm gonna gusset the f***ing thing in and call her mint. She broke my heart. So I broke her jaw. Alrighty, look at that plate bolted on the side. It's almost straight. I mean, a couple, a couple thou never hurt nobody. And uh, yeah, that guy's on there. Now we gotta do is come out the basement here. Basically 90 out of here, so she can sit on here nice and flat. Well, this is the hockey puck or whatever the f bushing I'm gonna use is gonna take up her side to side. And then uh, weld her solid here with a 45. Same thing on the other side. And the magic of camera work and some hard pedal. It'll be done. Alrighty, so what my hillbilly ass is doing here, I got a strategic piece of wood between the frame and the cross member and the block. I got her half ass level in there. Uh, what I did here is I measured from the firewall to the front of the mill, trying to clear. I might be able to run a mechanical fan. I'll run it if I can. If not, I'll just run aluminum fans and a, or a electric fan. It'd be f***ing sicky, dopey, sick trick dog. So what I'm gonna do now is build my motor mounts are gonna come out here. Uh, I got the engine kind of straight in there. I'm gonna measure the distance, the frame, the frame rail changes once, twice, three times in that little difference. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna find between the block and the frame right here and here just to get her damn near as straight as I can. And for drive line, this is where the old steady bearing used to hang. So I took the old thermometer, run the old light on her. So she's damn near dead center of the, the output shaft there, I would say on the money. I got some blocks of wood jammed between the body and the floor jack with the in the middle of it. So I picked up on it like a mother to pinch it in there and I still have enough room between the floor and the output yoke on the tranny. So I got that room there and it's about the right angle pointing straight back toward this guy to which I would hope Ford had this guy dead centered on the hanger bearing. What's your name? Delilah. Delilah. Reminds me of a, a pretty uh, big strip club down around my area. Oh yeah? Yeah, you couldn't work there though. That's where all the hot chicks work. You'd have to work at like one of the s joints around the corner with the f Alrighty, well, this side's all tacked up and she's actually sitting on the motor mounts right now. So on this side here, steering box is gonna be in the way, so I'm just gonna notch that out and the body mount will be, or the motor mount uh, bushing ice later will be right about there on the other side nothing's in the way so she's good to go so it's lean back so there's room here and off room here so that's perfect i'll be able to stack some isolators in there and bolt her the down and i think she's pretty straight and from here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get the engine crane out of the way once i get the uh engine mounts in there so i'm gonna cut this one out and Set it back down, maybe put the gusset in there. Set it back down, and then I'm gonna ratchet strap the engine back, as far back as it'll go. Because uh, this part of the firewall, I could give a sweet fiddler about. If it has to be uh, percussively maintenance to uh, fit the head and valve covers, well then that's what the has to happen. All that's right, well, this is a big pile of fiddle fuckery, but we're getting uh, we're getting some headway here. I went on the backyard and cut the side out of an old tire. It's a uh, metal corded sidewall. I wonder what kind of machine that would come off of. 
Hmm, even smells good. But anyhow, went and caught a couple pieces of uh, that, jammed her home between the frame rail and the engine mounts. I got the engine sucked back hard with this ratchet strap. I marked out the firewall where I'm gonna beat the living out of it and uh the tranny is dead center to the hanger bearing in the back so you can see it there there's the old hanger bearing so now we just got to do some quick last measuring here and uh i think i'm gonna drill a hole somewhere about there on this side and right about here on this side beer cans and are. who the f drinking down here all right so this is the stalker that came out of there so it would be kind of nice to reuse that instead of building a new one. So it looks like we might be able to do just that. So this was an old fucking, uh, for a exhaust hanger. Oh. So now, what we got going on here. So this is my measurement. So this, this is gonna go to show you guys that I'm not even that, well, I was really drunk when I did it, but it looks pretty good still. So this is the cross member of the stock 79 Ford. So this hole here is off center to the passenger side. I would say, oh, four or five inches. So I put this cross member in there i eyeballed this pinion before i put the cross member in to the dead center of this with that laser remember and it was bang on it couldn't have been any more in the middle so drilled some holes bolted her in now we're going to use this greasy old chunk of uh exhaust hanger stick her home in there run two bolts in it call her mint all right so you mind going up there and just bagging on the motor back and forth all right perfect that You get body slammed. Oh, you almost did, yep. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, I think that's good though. I don't see anything moving. Wake that wiggle. Everything's oh, wiggle it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, the bolts are loose as up there. Yeah, I, I left them loose as all, but they should be like they should be pretty good. I think it's good. I don't know. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out the hard way. Alrighty, crack our heads. Well, this is the motor mount all dialed in. It's gonna be tougher than sh another motor mount dialed in. They're both hot as. I don't know what to touch them right now, but a little dialed in. The cross member dialed in. It's going to add some pistons and maybe a head, and she's good to go. This will be an old start. What's that? I said, this will be an old start. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the is the reach. She's a little grown in. B, that's a 6BT, and that's a 6BT P-Pump 180 horse. Huh. Yeah, all okay. kind. It's a common, it's a horsepower trailer. Instead of the horse trailer, horsepower trailer. Oh, all right, one. well, here she is. The big, dirty, swinging pile of 12 elf. Wonder, uh, well, we'll get her on the stand. We'll see if she's locked up. There's no reason it shouldn't be locked up, but, uh, yeah, she be f***ing mint. Let's get her bolt into the stand. I'm already hair lips and half wits, so I built this engine thing. Oh, look at the welds on there. Just a hot pile of But I built this thing a while ago just bolts to the side of the mill slider in the old engine stand here and she's meant to just the struggle is real the part. for me struggling yeah oh yeah then we'll just gently place her down huh 12 valve on a stand let's see if it'll do one oh you can hear oil yeah <laughs> oh is she You're locked in there yeah, we're locked up yeah let's go the other way see what happens well it's got a real good rings in it because it's been sitting forever and it's still all right well it's the next day meow i'm still drunk we're not drunk are we not even that drunk all right so this old pile of cummins has to be running before uh we put her in there we gotta hear it run well for no other reason than to hear it run i knew it ran good when i first bought it but that was oh five years ago so i filled the whole engine full of oil so what i did i pulled the intake off poured a pile of oil in there turned it 180 and then uh, not with the god starter and then uh waited until it started puking oil out and then poured it poured oil in again so she's been waterlogged with oil for a long time to prevent rust going on so we gotta get that out of there and then uh tighten the injection pump down and get her to fire there's a pile of dodge up there pile of dodge is up there. Ooh, look at that thing majestic all right so now that you got the lines off and fiddle all that now just take the thing that you oh okay, this is a ford tool built out of something i found at the dump you just thread her home on there until she bottoms out and thread that guy down it'll yank the 
Figure out what size is that, inch and a quarter or inch and an eighth? No, it is an inch and a sixteenth. I knew I'd grab two. No, it's inch and an eighth. I knew it was inch and an eighth. I'm not drunk, you are. Mm. All right, all the holes are out. Let's and we got her hooked up to the cold start 500. Let's see, let's crank on her. You ready? Yeah. She's a squirter. Oh yeah. <laughs> Does she have a number I could get? Perfect. Beautiful. All right. Now delicately torque every one of these down. She'll sing. Dodge thought it was a wonderful idea to put this giant pile of electrical nightmare. Leave it to Dodge to put electrical nightmares on a 12 valve Cummins. So you just get rid of this fucking thing. You can buy this plate. All I'm going to do is just cut the fucking thing off and bolt her on there with just a plate. Because uh, this fuel bowl heater. Like, yeah, because the 12 valve gives a fuck about a fuel bowl heater. Go lay down. Injection pump on. There's oil in it. Anything coming? Got a couple? All right, let's crank them down. Here she goes. I mean, that starter can f*** right off. Ready? We gotta, we gotta apologize. We just ruined the whole motor. All them people in the comment section, right, Gord? Oh. You were in an engine without coolant. She's, she's a write-off. Yeah, let's get rid of this thing now. Start fuck over. Junk. Her people stunned. <laughs> Absolute. <laughs> him up. You watch the boss garage and stuff, and he, he always has, he always answers people nicely. They're like, oh yeah, you know, there's no coolant in it, but we only ran it for like a couple seconds, and this, that, and the other. He's trying to be nice, he, but you can see him deep down. He wants to be like, listen here, you mouth breathing <laughs> heads. It's fine. Get out of your mom's basement, stop f***ing off the of porn and go f*** yourself. Yeah. Alright, well now all we have to do is pull the whole engine down to a short block and do all of it. It's barely even that much work, but we need to eat and drink. Like drink, men. Drink, we gotta drink. And drink. And yeah. like men. Alright, well after a couple hundred bush lattes. Well, I mean, what is drunk? Got the whole f***ing tore down to her spin a thing right there. spin a thing looks good now. Do we pull the rod cap off and check healthiness on the far side of the oil pump? Do you want to be disappointed? No. Then don't. All right. <laughs> All right, but yeah, we got to do this timing f***ing gasket seal thing because it was blowed right the f*** out, so that's going to leak all over the track. Just drag racing things already f***ing kind of a drag what for, you know, not having leaking stuff, but, but the mud bog just mixes in with the water and it's fine. But, but this sh you got to make sure she's sealed up. So get the front gasket, the main gasket, and you got to pull the whole f***ing mill down, upside down, and do the f***ing, you know, all the stuff and so we're gonna keep at her. Now we're gonna keep drinking. Because engine assembly is always best when you're f***ing wasted. Hell yes! All right, well we're completely f***ing the floor up. But we're going back together here. We uh, went on Amazon and we spent $100 on a killer dowel pin fix. It's gonna be off. No, f*** that. We just uh, cut a chunk out of the old inner fender off the old Ford there. And uh, now there's a piece of the Ford right inside the motor. So it'll run better like that. All the high tack, a few new gaskets. And we're gonna slam this back together. A year ago. Man, I, I had it twice. Didn't do shit. Alrighty, well, we had her tore down. New rear main, new oil pan gasket. Got a new pan on there. What the fing being of a school bus variety. New fing covers and gaskets and high tack and no fiddle fing. You're not gonna want to wash it before you go in the motor like this. You don't want to get as much dirt in there as you possibly can. And yeah, and after that, I wish the fing parts would show up, but uh, until then, keep fit and have fun. Alrighty, we'll see you the next day again. <laughs> How many beer did we delete last night? All, all of it. So, we got, uh, got her right way up again, all sealed up. We definitely didn't uh, drink and f*** anything up yesterday, because that's not what you do. Now I gotta add some accessories onto here, seal this up, seal that up, and uh, put more on it. I'd like to 
put my valve springs in and my fucking uh, governor springs, but we can't because uh, the place I ordered them from is fucking stunned. Imagine that, a stunned parts person. All right, peckerheads, well, we're doing the old fucking exotic uh, head studs because couldn't get in uh, ARP. I guess exotic might be good. Who the fuck knows? It's probably better than bolt, especially reused ones. But I mean, we're going to go to the machine shop and get all this done proper, right, Gordon? Or we can just go ahead and take this thing. It's basically professional now since we got this thing. Turn around to the old inches so it says we need to go 0.2 of an inch deep well, that's what she said tighten her down give her a scribe so that's mint there you go and then uh we got 1.1 inches in i mean we're gonna be really particular here give her a little scribe there let's get to grendon you don't need to worry about machine shops when you're putting an engine together what you're gonna want to do is fire as many sparks towards it as possible yeah why even have a filter if you're not gonna use it I need to get a whole new grinding disc. And we're, we're going to be professionals here. We're going to finish it off with the flapper disc. You like that? Fresh out of the machine shop. No, oh, buddy. Even tell. Yeah, minty. Look at these motherfuckers. Dialed right in. I don't, you know, we definitely went over on the uh, measurement a little bit, and uh, the flapper disc kind of a few things up, but I don't know. I think it looks good. Oh, buddy. That's fucking sharp looking. Jesus. Man. So we're dealing with extreme clean conditions here, right? Just like a negative pressure room. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So we threw all the pedestals back on. We threw those studs in. We can't do at all with the, uh, obviously there's no push rods in there until I get my and um, valve springs in. But uh, we're just going to leave the head gasket seal in the flavor. You don't want to let that. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the head studs all one at a time. So start in the middle and work your way out. And uh, one at a time and do all the studs and make your mint. Put all the pedestals in there just so we can get these. These are just finger tight right now, but uh, those will be part of the sequence when we torque them all down. So what we're gonna do here, we'll do the regular sequence. And we're gonna do, we did a, a buck. Now we're gonna do a buck 25 and then we're gonna do a line torque at a buck 30 because them. Alrighty now. So we got the motor all down here put back together. Now we're just waiting on parts. Sorry, my like waiting on valve springs and we're not going to put the pump back on there until we have the 4k governor springs i know you can do them with an engine but that. i'm not going to fiddle around with that all right so meow old gordo here is going to give this some percussive maintenance and just clear this out and we already cut that off so beat the out of that would you Hold on, hold on, I'm a gentleman. Let me nice. spit on it before you give it the hammer. Give it a little more. Give the whole thing up and down there. Yeah, there you go. The wire. Why is there smoke growing out of that? <laughs> Friction. It's too close to the fucking dodge. That, 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 the smoke's coming out of a wiring harness somewhere. All right, well, here she's sitting. Gord down end uh, Now, I'll let her down here. There we go, that one's locked. Oh yeah, man, this one in real easy. You know how hard these motors are to get in and out of those shipping crates when you're not using an excavator? <laughs> how <laughs> is that? Looking pretty good to me. I think we're gonna do some more clearancing, but that's a whole lot of motor on a whole little truck. Man. Alrighty, pack your heads and piss flaps. Well, there's a fear some people have deep down inside of them about cutting and welding on frames. And that's a fear that Gordo and I have none of. So what we did here on this old bird is we got the mill planted in there and uh we're thinking about vitals vitals are radiator and intercooler and uh placement and all that shit. since we got the engine sitting in here we got it far back but i think we could get it so we went hobbling around for four hours looking through my giant piles of shit. so we got shipping crate intercoolers of second gen and third gen or fourth gen and there's another one there and then we come across a minty Power smoke rad out of a uh, 94, no, it was 90, 96, 97. What we did here, we got her dialed out. It was a little bit too wide, so we just gaped the frame out a little bit because it likes that. And on this side, we also gaped the frame out. I'll spit on it. So the top rad hose is going to be fing perfect. Going to go from here over to there. I think we'll be able to use a second gen rad hose, I think. And then uh, they couldn't f that up because there's no wiring in it. The bottom one, we're going to have to get a little bit creative with the way to fiddle into the uh, 
water neck, but that's no big deal. And we checked out an intercooler out of a 90, 99 to 04 power smoke. And they are the exact distance we need. So we can blast a hole here and a hole over there and then bring the intercooler piping right through there. So it'll be minty as f***. She'll have an intercooler on her. Stop. Oh, oh, oh man. man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the you do that? I don't, I don't know where the f***ing, we're picking up, we're leaving off, whatever the f*** I'm doing here, but we've been giving her all away. Got another f***ing intercooler here. I got uh, the f***ing grill all taken off. Cab mounts are hillbilly as f*** now. They're up front instead of being back here, what, for uh, cutting them out. Got the uh, power smoke rad in there. This is out of a 95-ish power smoke. So what we're going to do is the titties that are on the bottom, we're just going to weld in uh, plates so it sit on it with the hole in the plate with a rubber mount and then up top we're going to uh, basically do the same thing but with some lighter steel and cap it off so to pull the out you unbolt that guy unbolt this guy take both hoses off and the rod will lift right out <coughs> all right the so progress is looking better than good we got uh so the rad oh the welds even the rad is sitting on these little with rubber, rubber isolators on the bottom to keep it from wearing through the top same thing and i drilled and tapped some 3 8 bolts for uh quick swappage so you just pull that off you pull that off and then you can pull the out all righty so and then that also means that if i want to i could double up on the rubber here which you never do but you could double up on the rubber if she's just a nasty old skag that lived at the husky house and gives a job in the parking lot and splashes her box out of the puddle filled with 1540 but you can double the rubber up and make it a little tighter and real good news is this and mechanical fan is just barely even on there it's like threaded barely to on and it is the perfect distance away from that rad already die hard board guys you're gonna want to avert your eyes as to what is about to happen viewer discretion is strongly advised for for the die hard furred fans so all the support and stuff it, it falls out after it's gotten to an argument with the, the plasma cutter and uh you know i haven't even been drinking that much plasma cutter might have got a little excited and up the word rear on the front of the hood here. You big dumb son of a. But look at it. It closes me in. Closes right up. Gonna add a couple hood pins because hood pins are cool. It means it's fast. And the intercooler is the new grill. Uh, uh, in. I mean, a guy definitely could have cut these legs off. Guy could have cut these legs off and slid her all the way back in there and made it all. Me and this, that, and the other, but we've done enough leg cutting for uh, for one lifetime. So. Yeah, and I'm not Kyle at Boosted Lifestyle. I can't weld aluminum for shit. It's just nice to see a Dodge guy sweating with another guy and it doesn't involve cornholing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, school. <laughs> but you guys are trying to get a shaft in a hole, so. We are. You know. Dodge, shaft. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is what we got for our support on this side. Support, you know, you welfare recipients know what that is. That's all the money we give you for being a lazy skid. So yeah, now the f***ing goes through here. You gotta hook it up to whatever turbo we get. Hopefully that f***ing comes soon. Uh, all right, from like 20 minutes ago to now, I, the, the drunker has gotten a lot more given her. Hasn't it, boys? They don't give a Gotta go ahead and start hooking up air to air. We're gonna do that with dump pipe. Over the years, I've been finding all kinds of f***ing pieces of pipe and this, that, and the other thing from the old dump, believe it or not. I just been put her into this crate to uh, cut this off just meow. And this guy here. Oh man, it's like it was meant to be. Dump pipe for the win. But I found this hose. I don't know what the it's for, but it literally fit perfectly, right? I just had it in the pile of old Ford sh and it went on lickety split. So that's the top rad hose. And the bottom rad hose comes off of here and uh, off down there. And on one of the uh, industrial Cummins blocks I had outside, it had this sucker dialed on there so i cut that off dialed her in there and this is a top rad hose i think off of a ford f-350 of some variety and she fits mint so there's all the rad hose is done all right so being that i gotta got have a degasser bottle or whatever the f thing's called on here and being that i don't want to buy any parts what i'm going to do is mount this sucker up in here something like so and then this hose that come off the stock power smoke is going to run over here and onto there but uh so this is the 90 that you would use for your heater lines going into your cab so what the color is going to do instead of buying some fancy bolts i uh, went rooting through the pile of have and this is the sucker that come out of there when it's piped and i'm just gonna that hole in there well this 
connected to it and then hose clamp three quarter in there that came off the power smoke no special parts and uh she should hold me in on my welder on that all righty so as far as the degasser bottle goes we just scabbed around the fender here good and solid put a mount down there coming together too bad i gotta take it all apart again all righty well i just got back from uh town with a rickshaw load full of parts even found some new chains at the dump there should be enough stuff in this pile of rickshaw to at least get the thing run i got my valve springs i got waiting for and i got my clutch so we can add that i'm in all righty well bruce bolted in clutch is in oh hopefully the pressure plate's in there yeah motor mount or that up allegedly knock on wood she's in there for good meow so now i'm gonna pull the injectors out of the pull the valve covers off and then start doing valve springs and i'll do that it was me well after a pants i'll do that while i'm doing the uh valve springs all right well since i'm a derelict hillbilly and i didn't do the head gasket because you know i might as well save the 50 dollars and have it blow out later when i'm giving her all the way i'm just going to be doing the fucking valve springs meow i got number six and number one done what for them being and uh partying together so i thought i'd show you hair lips a little bit i've done these before four set i think i've done third or fourth set with them in the truck so i'll show you hair lips what the f is going on so head over to the old toolbox and grab yourself a chunk of thick wire that'll do and uh you could probably just watch your valve overlap so uh number one is on top dead center number six i'll be doing valve overlap learn that from a smart feller so then if you're going to do number two i just stuff a wire down in her to get rid of uh, confusion so just stick her down in the hole like so take your 15 mil socket roll her over till she won't go no more back her up a hair till let's go with the wire there you go and then go back a little bit again so and then go clockwise here you can probably just watch down in there and wait till she's on top dead center if you're really worried about it take an old chunk of welding rod there give her a hard sanding make sure there's no there put that in the number one hole or number two hole and then just watch it she's in the hole you'll see it going down so if she's starting to go down that means piston's on its way back down and then back her up all right so that hole is that top dead center compression mint grab your fancy little tool that you made out of a so this is just a retainer for the injector with a m style fitting welded to the thing thread her in there and now hopefully the throw of your crank is dead center so the wind power won't knock her back down we'll see if we're good here i need to go down to about 50 piss eye on the old regulator here now keep a close eye on this balancer oh this balancer seen better days for sakes missing a chunk of rubber but uh now you're gonna stick the air to her and hopefully your balancer doesn't move all right nothing moved take your brass hammer give her a wipe give your exhaust a brap intake so you know that's your intake you'll, you'll hear it blowing back to the intake and that's your exhaust man you're gonna want to beat on your engine with a hammer all right now take this little nifty little tool you built i actually had a video a long time ago where i uh, show you how to build these things well you tighten that guy down all 13 mil so you want to make sure that the tool is dead center between the valve springs or else you won't get the new valve springs in tighten the out of it or just snug it it'll be fine all right so the whole idea behind the wind is the wind is holding the valves up so they don't fall down inside the pistons the idea behind the piston being all the way to the top that if you do lose wind or some fiddle or you kind of had to happen your valves don't fall to the bottom and then you got to pull the head off that's a bad time gonna have a bad time so as you heard it was starting to blow wind out of there like a libtard about having to work so what you just do with it you treat it like a libtard that doesn't want to work you just hit it with a hammer so you just give this a tap so what is happening there is the keepers are locking inside the valves and not letting the all right it's still going you gotta give them their hit so there now it's good now if you hear it coming out of the exhaust side you know that the exhaust side is getting hung up but that seems pretty good sounds good anyway yeah it's not hissing all right tighten her all the way down here oh and if you guys are wondering if i left enough room for push rods on this thing i cut a big gape big gaping hole to the point where it's in the interior but that that's fine if the firewall is doing fire stuff you want to know it's doing fire stuff so that's why you have that hole there so yeah you tighten this nut down and now you'll see things starting to wander around a little bit and then you take your good magnet and your good mac pick and you'll just stick them home 
Hopefully you guys can see that. You stick the magnet there and you knock the off for sake, God presser. And you just let those things come out of there. Don't let those fall into the God engine. So that one went to the back. That's it, uh, exhaust. This is intake. Or let her back up. Put your fingers around it like that so you don't drop the fucking nut in the engine. I think I'm gonna drop a nut. Nut over there. This guy over here. They stop yelling at you. So now the only thing holding the fucking valves in the mail right now is the wind. So go ahead and grab yourself a couple new valve springs. So these are 60 pound valve springs set up for the 4K governor spring. So what that means is you get 4,000 spins to the guy crank in this dirty old 12 valve so if you're worried about let's say if you're drunk and you're doing this like i am if you're worried about the the differences in the two you can definitely tell this one is uh, me this one's sawed off frenchman i am sawed off frenchman so take that one throw her in the bin that guy on valve keeper same goes for this side and now when you look down on top you're gonna want to center them on there for when you go to crank this down all right so either damn near center and now you start cranking her down now you're going to want to keep your ears open right now because if you start to hear wind hissing that means that you're hitting one of the valves and that's a bad time so you're going to want to adjust the uh the top of the valve spring there so it goes right down the center of the hole so we'll spin her all the way down here so this sucker is going to have a lot more jam on it being that they're 60 pound valve springs if you're a dodge guy you might want to put your purse down for this so I'll take your keepers keep two hands on the suckers don't let the suckers fall all right so you get both of them in there and this guy here not down far enough so you'll just crank her crank her down a little further all right now just take your little pick and push them up into the hole they're supposed to be in that's what she said there now wind them down and then just guide them into the holes as she releases pressure you make sure that they're good and seated good and seated now back them all the way off now what i like to do is just tap them with a hammer Make sure good. So what you'll get there is a couple of minty units. Let's spin her all the way off. Spin this guy off. Continuing not to drop in the mill. And that guy's done. Looking minty. Now you go back to number five. So if you're doing these things, I highly suggest buying some kind of name brand ones. Uh, power driven diesel down in the Americas. If you live down in America, buy your well, if you live anywhere, try to buy your power driven diesel i was gonna buy my room but uh well i already bought a bunch of room anyway but i love those guys they are the burt reynolds of 12 l they, they know everything like everything if you don't know uh they have a lube tube channel it's pretty badass and they uh put these old 12 elves for the torture test there's nobody out there that knows more about the 12 l engine than power driven diesel they're great i didn't have any time to wait for to come over the border and justin was just standing there with his hand out for everything that comes across the border so sometimes gets stuck there and fiddle f so these are pack pack break and either but in my daily driver and that thing hasn't blown up yet so might as well just go with these well i got it all torqued on obviously start in the middle work your way out and then do a big dirty line torque on her so now we're gonna want to do a set on the valves all right so to find number one i marked it here obviously but you can use the cam to flag it out stick that in there break that off 1500 times like i always do or what you can do is roll the engine over so as you're standing there looking at it the engine always goes clockwise so you spin the thing over so now what you're going to watch is your number six companion hole your running mate so what she's going to do is when you're i'm going to wind her back here just to give her some exaggerated sh so you see the rockers there so what's going to happen is as the engine turns over you're going to see the exhaust valve shutting oh you're you guys are moving now sucker so you're going to see the exhaust valve starting to shut or, or finish shutting. So you see the exhaust valve shutting up like a turd cutter. So you're about to see the valve overlap now. Now intake valve is about to start opening. See? So right when the intake valve starts to open and the exhaust valve is just about shut, that's overlap. That's your valve, your camshaft overlap or whatever the it's called. So the, the J-Man mechanic, the Quillen, he meant to get Tommy all the he said that this is where you get your scavenging a f or some. F I don't know. He's way f smarter than my fat ass. But long story short, when that is happening back there, up here, look at this. I mean, just get a look at that. Right on the f money as to where the f 
he's got to be. So this is top dead center compression on number one hole. So we're looking here. Top look at this. They are right because they had to look at it first to set your valves up. Now, this is all for beginners. If you know what you're doing, obviously you don't need to do this. This is uh, pretty uh, everyday for a guy that's pulling mills apart every day. But for the mom like myself, that like to fiddle with shit when they're not fiddle with everything else. Hey, I'm a professional alcoholic. It's hard to mix professionalism and professional alcoholicism. It's 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 a long hard road to hoe. So. Uh, Great. So what you're looking at here, they got it written down. So with number one, the top dead center, what you're gonna want to do is set both on number one, intake on number two, exhaust on number three, intake on number four, and exhaust on number five, and leave number six hole completely alone. So go ahead, set both on number one, intake, like I said, exhaust, intake, exhaust. All right, like I was John about before, we did both on this guy. We did intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, so now what we're gonna do is spin this thing over. Make sure your cam isn't pinned out. Nope, we're good. Now what you're gonna want to do is spin this mill over 360 degrees. So what you're gonna see now is number one hole is lashed in both into exhaust. So you're gonna spin over, and now you're going to see the valve overlap that we've seen on number one hole instead of on number six hole. So you keep on going. So you're gonna see the exhaust valve open up. Mechanics with peg, eh? Barely even drunk before noon. All right, so you see the exhaust valve coming up. Intake's about to start opening. See the intake? See, starting to move. So now you're on overlap on number one. So starting from number six hole, number six should be looser than shit. There you go. So now, starting on number six. So number six on top dead center, so both Intake, so both of these. Now you go intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, go. There you go. Alrighty, so we're done all the valve springs. We're done a valve set. Go ahead and count all your old springs and make sure they're all the same. Because the last thing you want is some uh, old stock spring in there partying around with the other springs that are good for 4,000 RPM and one that ain't. Valves don't like to party with pistons very much. And well, when they do, gets up. But anyhow, so we're on to the next step of this pilot which is uh injector where in the f would a guy have put them f things all right so these are the injector options we got here we got the 215s that are out of it i think these are 215s check check, check the part numbers we got the chinese injectors so we got 215 stock they're supposed to be these ones are supposed to be 350 horsepower marine chinese and then these ones are bd 350 horse injectors so these are just ones i had laying around these are the chinese ones i bought while i was taking a sh we're gonna pop test these things and just to see if they're garbage or not because uh you know you gotta trust your chinese pop tester all right so a little 1202 on the floor to get rid of some of this well, we're going to pump this f***er up. So these are the 215 stock. Let's see what they pop at. Right at 2,900 PSI. And we got a nice spray coming out of them horse. Well, that's one of them that has a nice spray coming out of it. Now we'll do the f***ing Chinesium 350 horses. You know, I don't know how the f*** they make money off of these things. That's a lot of machining and a lot of fiddle f***ing sell for $100 or 150 bucks for six of the Thing. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Don't quote me on it. Some people are really stupid. I mean, sometimes you get drunk and you take a sh and spend a couple hundred bucks on Amazon. Way she goes. All right, let's see what they pop at. 30, 400 piss eye. And that's a nice spray coming out of there. All right, so that's number one Chinese -ium popped off at 3,500 piss eye. Let's see what the fing uh, number two one goes at. 3,500 on the nose nice spray pattern out of it i'm getting impressed so that one's busting off but three thousand which isn't good that's not very consistent is it this is injector number four we're going to test out here 3100 actually we'll call that guy that 3500 piss eye i don't know i'd like to keep the numbers up around there because i don't know more piss eye more better right more of a hot shot into the old firing chamber in the old boss's office let's see here oh this one feels good she's pressuring up mint Under pressure. all right that one's busting at 3400 so that one's good and number six hole right up to 3400 piss eye and just a pretty good pattern off of these i don't really know what a good pattern looks like but it's not just 
fucking spraying out of the end like crazy. All right, so the Chinese injectors, we're going at, uh, so yeah, that's the 3,400, 3,400, 31, 3,000, and two at 3,500. So mint, mint, not mint, not mint. So these two injectors, we're going to just shim them up a bit, see if we can get them up around the 350,000 million range, and then uh, see if they work. So like I was saying earlier, I love power-driven diesel. They're minty as um, They sent me a bunch of sh an injector shim kit and this, that, and the other. Bought the a long time ago in the name of trying to get uh, more fuel economy out of the old furs. Yeah, this is that AFC Live thing. I haven't put that in yet. And we got injector shim, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, shim these two up so they pop at 35 hundy. Alrighty, we'll break open your injector. Lose that thing, whatever that is. You don't need that. Grab the thing that the Dodge guys use for finding each other's peckers. So smooth. Finger the in there pop her back together oh the old ace cold start and the old well everything's a cold start for a 7.3 idi let's do it out there hosing it with cosby sauce right now you can hear it oh yeah yeah loyal screw her down go over to where you were cutting with this metal saw where old metal filings are and tighten the her down let's see what the she pops at now oh right on the money 3,500 piss. Ah, uh, yeah, about 36, 35. So that one's good. 35 hundy. Now we gotta boost this up a little bit. Oh, yeah, right on the money. 35 hundy. Spray pattern looks mint. Alrighty. Well, we got our injectors. So I don't know. The injectors in these trucks are, uh, well, they're kind of like the old lady after a couple beer. They're real easy to get into i can do a set of injectors and a 12 valve with a hot engine and four or five or six beer you probably get all six injectors done in less than uh 20 minutes so if we got to swap them out for whatever we will but uh until yet until then we're just gonna run the things and uh see how the they do so if you're putting injectors in and you go to stick her in the hole and the washer falls off just take a pair of grease throw her on there stab your washer on there and then it'll stick to it while you're sticking it in the hole i'm telling you when it comes to sticking in the hole a little lube goes a long way all right so now holding these injectors down now that's a issue i have with these old mills they say it's 45 foot pounds to hold the injectors down and i'm going to tell you right meow that's what i used to do like oh yeah gotta go buy torque spec and all the rest of the shit. and every time they leak so i usually go to 45 and then i just keep going all the way to about 70 foot pounds there and it likes that <clears throat> i haven't pulled the threads out of the head yet so i mean that basically means they're supposed to do that all righty well next thing on the fiddle fuckery list we might as well do the pump and the timing meow so before we go ahead and throw this hooter on there we're gonna go ahead and make sure it can make a whole lot of more rpm i absolutely love these bosch injection pumps they're minty as it's uh you know they were sitting around in the engineering teams like uh how are we allowed to make it and then and then the other guy with the big stinky foreskin says all of it so this thing weighs oh it's got to be it's got to be 50 pounds you know how heavy it is america so go ahead pull your little slide door off here make sure you drop all the dirt inside the pump don't leave the pin in these suckers because you'll shear it off or bend one of the tabs and you'll have a real bad time Put it in there like that, flag it out, put it like that for running. Don't f that up. So now you gotta go find the nut and, and f throw that on there so you can spin the pump over. Or just throw a pipe wrench right on the end of the shaft. They'll love that. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a, uh, what is that? A one and three sixteenths. I don't have any f***ing communist sockets that f***ing big. So just go ahead and bottom the hoor out. And now spin her over until you see your f***ing governor spring sitting there. Minty as f So meow what you do, and change your uh, governor springs. Alrighty, so basically you pull this pile out you pull the base and the shims and all the rest of the fiddle she was sitting on so she was pretty much sitting in there like that with the cap on it and uh well the shaft going through the middle of it and you pull the whole works out you leave the big spring on the outside so yeah you'll have all this stupid come out with it you don't need any of that junk it all comes with the new and then this is what the new pile is so you take this pile you throw the whole works in there obviously it's upside down throw it in there like so put the cap on put the nut on and then just kind of eyeball it if you want just make sure the nuts tight enough i don't know it's uh you can use a caliper and make sure that there's enough space between there and there power driven diesel and uh the boss garage have professional videos where they're not even drinking doing this so uh, if you want to go over and have a gander of their stuff they're pretty smart but uh if you're drunk you don't give a 
Just gonna give her all the way. We'll then go ahead and do that. All right, so to put these and pumps back on there's a bunch of different guys telling you a bunch of different hooey on the internet and this that and the other and how to do it don't use loctite or sleeve retainer but you're gonna want to clean the out of it so first things first just tip it up like so and let any oil that's in there run out of the thing so when you move it around the oil doesn't get right back on the shaft again all right grab a chunk of sandpaper and just go to town on the old shaft here that's the out of the shaft so she's nice and scratched up no shiny surface and then uh lower the off Loud noises! and then go ahead and etch the inside of the, the inside of the gear as well so when the f***ers meet together she has one friction fit sandpaper inside the engine that's what you're going to want to go with all righty packer heads so what we're doing meow is we're adding some timing to this mill so if you were doing this from power driven diesel's instructions i highly recommend going over to their website and watching their, or the lube tube channel and watching their shit. for the love of get them over a hundred thousand subscribers already they're worth it if that man came over to my house slapped my kid up the back side of the head i would still have nothing but respect for that guy because he just knows these 12 valves if there's anybody that knows more about 12 valves i'd like to see it the guy's beauty so what you're gonna want to do is go over there and watch his video and subscribe and don't be stunned and know they haven't given me a thing everything you're looking at here has been bought and paid for so what you're doing is you're gonna want to pull that 10 mil bolt out of there make it so she's red right on the money with this little wire right on zero on top of that center so these guys couldn't have made this any easier this is like the old lady with a three balls of wine in her and she's just fired up like rodeo donald teddy bar easy as so what you're gonna want to do is flag your pump out so pull this guy out all right so this is your little tool dealy for making sure she's zeroed out so she should slide in there easy there you go uh that's what she said she slid in there easy so what this it means now is this pump is zeroed out to whatever your timing is set at on your your cover here so i think it's a 13 and a half on this mother yeah 13 and a half degrees for top dead center so that's what this pump set up for so they put theirs at 22 degrees so that's what i'm gonna put mine at sakes with this uh the timing gear is not hooked to the engine right now now what we're gonna want to do is roll the engine over in a retarded manner so when i roll this over the cam gear is gonna move but the pump is not going to move so we're going to want to add eight degrees or eight and a half degrees of timing to this here so start moving her so you're going to watch this pump gear it's going to move there so that's her so what happened is the engine moved the pump gear didn't or the the pump gear did but the shaft didn't so meow we just advanced the timing eight and a half ish degrees so now she's going to rev to the moon oh. all righty so my fat ass has just been absolutely crushing lattes Good night, man. and uh giving her all the way on this old hooer uh got most of her together but then in my drunken stupor i forgot to uh cut the ever living foot off of this fuel plate so basically there's a lot of complicated things going on here so this is your afc or your, your afc yeah air fuel control and this guy fits into here and then basically as you're and giving her ramps up fuel or whatever and this that and the other that's complicated and there's just little fuel ramp thing and you can grind it and you can fiddle with it or you can just open up another latte get drunk as and cut this thing right the off so there was a lot of uh talk on what kind of grind that is whether it's a zero grind or a one grind or whatever i call it the greta grind you have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your fuel plate she gone that's gonna piss greta right the off and while she's still hot from grinding just bolt her right back in there oh yeah all the fuel now, i think you can slide this guy all the way to the front for maximum fuel and then the afc all the way to the front and then we can dial that spring in on there so she just vomits black smoke because that's what you're going to want all righty so the turd bow is going along the same themes as the injectors and whatnot we went full chineseium oh it came with new gaskets jm turbo chinese is let's see what's going on in here there she is boys that is one big pile of shit. She's a big one. Oh, this morning when I woke up, went and hit the fucking dump up. And, uh, oh, grabbed all kinds of good stuff. Like mint snow shovel, mint fucking whatever the fucking shovel. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to build the turbo drain pipe out of what looks like a old 
elliptical trainer towel rack 500 or something so basically just weld the bottom pipe on bolt the plate on tack it all up and then run her down to here should be fucking me in all righty well after some uh procrastinator elliptical fucking dump pipe she's looking mint spacing and bent mint between the turd bowl and the compressor housing there lines all good orientations on the turbo is all good that lines up mint only thing left to do meow is weld her all up solid and then exhaust time man i am excited about putting exhaust in this thing like it's gonna be this tall it's gonna be a lot of welding that well in the name of not wanting to wait for clamps i welded all that in there just a huge exhaust on this thing just 12 feet of pipe and all the rest no that right out the hood minty as I mean, the passenger doesn't have to see where you're going. And this way, I don't have to have an EGT gauge. I can just watch the smoke cheating out the pipe. All right, well, in the name of firing this up, I need to get the exhaust is done, the turbo is done, the fucking, uh, all that shit is done. The engine's all done, except for fuel lines, fuel tank, and power steering lines. I think that's fucking it. So for power steering lines, I went out to the shop and got a brand new custom built hose and spent all kinds of, I'm just you. I just cut off the Ford one, and I don't know what kind of metal this was, but I just welded the f out of it. And when I thought it was fixed, I just kept welding. And I think, I mean, there's probably a hole or two in there, but it'll just be dust control for the track because people at the drag racing track love dust control. Toss that f on there. The return line is all right. I think the return line is even long enough to go to the f***ing stock. Look at that. Boom. Done. Return line, pressure line off the pump. She's f***ing done. All right. Well, we've just been fiddle f***ing hard here. I got the fuel lines ran. I got the sender all dialed in. So all I did, I took a brand new sender that's made out of the finest chinesium and welded the f out of a return line to it. And I bent the f out of it too because it's uh, kind of the bottom of the tank like it should. But there she f***ing goes right there. So all I got to do now is connect those two f***ers, cap everything off. Maybe put a filler neck on there, add some 1202, and we're going to make some f***ing smoke. Oh man, I'm excited. Alrighty, well the fuel lines are ran, the sender's in, everything looks f***ing mint. But I don't have this. If you guys remember what the fuel tank looked like, things were struggling. So I don't know if they're the same on the 90s Ford, so we're gonna go find out. But there is one problem that I have been having with this 90s Ford. And that problem is, every time I get drunk, for some weird reason, it gets more and more flat. I don't understand what's happening to it. It's like it just, it's come out of nowhere and just flattened itself out, but have a rear tank i think it does have a rear tank and it should be in there somewhere and like i'm going to use hand tools to get this thing out well you kind of use your hands don't tell little johnny i'm stealing his mini hole Well, that was easy. I think that's her. Pull that out of there. And then this guy, and f***ing mint. Man is having your own junkyard ever handiest. Look at that, 1979 to 19 f***ing whatever the f and she just slips right in. Like you f***ing bought at dinner, holy f All right, well, the old lady said the bush lattes are cold and the dinner is hot, so I'm gonna get my f***ing fat ass in gear here. Ain't no tapper like a self tapper. You don't need to worry about cross threading stuff. All right, she's grounded out. Let's just see if she cranks. All righty, well, she cranks. I f***ing love these engines. Don't worry, this isn't permanente. Because I did have the whole engine tore down, and, well, I do like to drink a lot, so, you know, maybe that causes memory loss. Who the f*** knows? But let's f***ing see if she'll fire. Oh, yeah. We're getting squirting hold and a little bit of cheech. She's gonna go. All right, I smell 1202 a burning and she's getting fucking minty. I'm excited. Here, we gotta come over here and check the oil pressure as soon as she fucking fires. So, all right, well, this should be it. I guess just tighten the injectors up a little more than that. You don't need to worry about loose fucking injector lines. Oh, the timing's hot, I remember. It ain't gonna wanna start for <laughs> And the fuel's a little excessive. We need to give her a little snort. See, if I was a newfie, I'd spray it over here, but you know, I'm not. 
All right, let's see if it can't backfire at me and light something on fire. Oxygen. Let's see how she fires back up. Once it gets boost, you'll light off. God damn it. I just want to go bag on it now. You don't need to worry about coolant and water pipes and fing belts. Alright, so I stayed up many nights thinking how the did the guy turn a mechanical style linkage setup into a hydraulic setup on one of these old 79 birds? I, I don't think I'm the only one. I don't think I'm the last one. But listen here, peckerheads and piss flaps. I thought it was hard to spot, but uh, turns out, well, it's easier than trying to get the job to be prime minister in Canada. Creek. We have uh, recently switched to drinking uh, water bottles out of uh, water out of uh, when we have water bottles uh, out of a uh, plastic. Uh, sorry, away from plastic towards uh, paper. It's hard to watch, but hard to look away. So you see the the seam on the body. There's a a gusset seam right here. So I went right beside that. Let her off. We're not going yet. It doesn't even move yet, you mom. And then I went in here. So I drilled a couple, or I drilled one big hole for the sucker to sit through so this is a ford master cylinder and it's a dodge slave cylinder all right the ford master just goes right through here and uh of course the firewall is weak as fuck. i'm gonna gusset that up but all you do is there's a paint line and the clutch uh riggings there and then now you drill that hole right around where that paint line is and then that will allow you to have nice and easy, tra easy travel on that rod there and what i'm gonna do is just drill a tiny hole probably in the back of this shackle here where the eyelet and then just put a needle greaser in it you just fire some grease in there now and then whenever you grease the truck and i think that'd be better than good looking at all righty so some drunken uh, heavy equipment operating went on last night no big deal got the old clutch link set up hit the clutch joe working mint down there everything's mint i mean the firewall is bowing a little bit but i do have this piece of steel in here go ahead go ahead and give her again it's bracing back the clutch pedal linkage here so it's all well to get her should be mint and uh well if it breaks it breaks so the thing's going to be sitting beside a lot of other vehicles and the last thing we want to have is anything dodge electrical on it because dodge electrical can just fly right out of here and get in someone's truck and second hand electrical problems so we're going to want to put a third alternator on it but yeah so we're just going to weld this up put her on there and then uh using nothing but the finest steel that i found dumb what are you doing are you drinking i dare you yeah, we got some dump steel I found yesterday, so yeah, we're gonna make it out of this in the fucking bin. Well, this is her, she's dialed in mint. The uh, bracket goes on, doesn't touch at all, looks pretty good. Up top, we perfected our method. Still use dump steel, so the porosity is out of control. Man, I didn't use the, the, the proper top bracket. Where did I put the other bracket at? Am I that much of a drunk derelict? Yeah, hey, look, that's the brand new top one. We didn't use it. Oh well, it's working on there. Alrighty, so that's the altered tater all dialed on there. Uh, make sure she's mint. There she goes. Not good to me. Then you can give me a f***ing automobile. A f***ing Datsun, a f***ing Toyota, a f***ing Mustang, a f***ing Buick. Four f***ing wheels and a seat. I think you're ready to go, so can you get the we have swapped out and we can figure out the drive line. But right now, you feel like burning some tires? Mm, yeah. Did you just say, DD Speed Shop? DD Speed Shop? DD Speed Shop. DD Speed Shop? Are you wearing a Jalbert? Yeah. FLT5 oh, or whatever his name is? Yeah? Oh, a Dodge door sounds like she's open nice. What's up with these fing cookies bars everywhere? Yeah,
see the sparks come on. Oh, over. yeah. You can do a road with no tires on the back. They liked it. I mean, you still drive straight down the road. See some serious. All right, Gabbert. Peckerheads, we're all a little hungover today, you know, a couple of drinks last night, a little bit of a burnout, no big deal, those tires weren't even that f***ed up. Finally got some wiring done, we got some ground wire, we got some power wire, we got some exciter wire to the starter tied into the old f***ing wiring harness. Oh, power steering works. Well, as you can tell, I got the diff in it. Tr traction bars, leaf springs. Well, they're stunned. He's definitely stunned. And the tires are dead. What a get, get. And there's an eighth of an inch of black soot uh, all over the roof and windshield. What does that mean? Well, might mean something stunned. And by something stunned, that means that, uh, well, a guy may or may not have lost a uh, certain SD card. An SD card that had the rest of the build footage on this old Ford that uh, was first person. I have two cameras. Usually I use one camera for uh, all this f***ing talking that I do. And I have another camera for outside views. Well, the outside camera, I have everything. I had both SD cards. Everything's minty as f***. you a needy dog. One goes deep on the, on the seat. One goes deep. All right, go in there. Get in the truck. He's terrified of this thing when it's running. Can't handle the sound of the turd bowl. Cause he's been microwaved. Mate, it's already kicked off. What do we do next? Oh, instructions are in the microwave. As I was jawing about, the SD card is gone. I spent days looking for this thing. I uh, told my buddy Dallas I would give him a, uh, a real nice hand job uh, with my cornhole if he were to find it out at his place. Nothing. I uh, ripped the whole interior out of this truck. Son of a Jesus Christ. Son of a bitch. Christ. God. The whole interior was ripped out. The seat, the heater box, the whole f***ing works was out of the truck, on the floor of the shop. I rooted through the heater box, took the heater box apart, ripped apart the heater core. Um, nothing. I was desperate to find that f***ing SD card. I, I couldn't believe I lost it. The good f***ing times that were had in this dirty old Cummins dumpster was, uh, well, she was on real ah oh, it, it, it's still bugging a fella i'm not gonna lie to you i wish uh i wish it wasn't gone but it's the way she goes dad i know this looks up right now but it's, it's not that bad i mean it's pretty you know, I'm, I'm sorry i can't believe this happened it's the way she goes buddy the way she goes but the good news is is uh she held up real good 
I handed an absolute f***ing shit kicking to this old fur. Every day I was burning tires off. We had to stop a few times on the trip to buy uh, tires. We stopped at a trailer park and we had some tires swapped over and this, that, and the other. The drag slicks were, uh, you know, so we put on another set of drag slicks and then, uh, I don't know how, but those ones got It was a two and a half week build. Then we drove her out the shop and uh, and we backed this hooer in. This was a whole debacle on itself. So the story be told is we uh, backed this guy in there and it had, uh, I got this thing from Manitoba Slims a few years ago and I just had it right full of Cummins parts. And uh, well, we backed her in the shop, cut all the axle out from underneath it because the axle was absolute dog. Welded in a whole new axle that I found at the dump and uh, off an old snowmobile trailer. Welded that axle in and uh, off with the dump axle onto there dump suspension and this trailer pulled flawlessly but we had welders and all kinds of in there spare train imagine that spare jet rag and uh, we didn't end up using a spare jet rag even though every gear that i shifted in that truck while i was racing was a power shift and if you don't know what a power shift is a power shift is when you have it matted leave it right there i was power shifting every gear in this old bird all the way from well i never did power shift first and second because that was useless but second third fourth and i power shifted into fifth a couple times people always saying that these jet rags like the confetti but uh they couldn't be more wrong so yeah as i was saying we built the truck the truck was mint traction bars rear diff new drive shaft which by the way big thanks to uh blair and sean at a1 driveline for hooking me up with the shaft not government style. That was absolutely f***ing beauty, you guys. It held up tips out of 10. Alrighty, so the uh, as far as the motor goes, uh, I put the motor in here. It was running good. Everything was going better than good. And I went out and tested on it a little bit. Dialed her into the old danger zone. <laughs> that a stock exhaust manifold that is not original or flipped upside down like this one is to a 12 valve engine. I should have known this and I, I do know this, but I didn't do it. I did not have the manifold plane down. So you'll do it, you'll put it on a machine and you'll have it flattened out. So the mating surfaces are true. Well, I didn't have that done. And uh, well, this was the result. I broke off every exhaust port off the head. Never seen this before. I didn't over torque it. I didn't do anything wrong, I don't reckon. But it was a one piece stock manifold, as you see here, that came off the original engine, I think. I don't know, I have a bunch of parts off a bunch of sh the problem with these are is the bolt has space between here and the head and that puts a lot of uh, uneven pressure on the heads of each of these bolts. So when it's been used to riding one way on the truck its whole life and then you flipped it upside down so you can have a turbo sticking through the f***ing hood the, uh, and I didn't have it planed, what happened was it heated up. I mean, brass does melt at 1700 degrees and I melted the brass plugs out of said exhaust. So I might've gotten her a little hot. Between the heat and the torque of the manifold twisting, she broke off all five ears except for the last one on this dirty old 12 valve head. Just look at the lineup of these dirty old diesels in here. So all the uh, titties of that head had broken off three days before uh, racing commenced. So that, that was a real can to be dealt so i uh, pulled her back in the old shop here <coughs> pulled the head off of it took another head off another mill i had brought it into uh scott at precision uh precision machine shop in grand prairie here minty as they got me in within the hour i brought it in in the morning and they had her done right after 
bunch, just a bunch of beauties. They deck the head and they uh, deck one of the manifolds for me. That being said, I called uh, Supreme Diesel out by Sexsmith Oil Alberta, and uh, the minty f***ing prick sold me this BD manifold that he had on the shelf. Uh, gave me a real good deal on it. He said that someone had bought this manifold or was gonna pay for it a while ago, and it's just been sitting on the shelf for like six f***ing months. So he says to me, he says, "Peg and leg, and I'll give it to you." I'll and, uh, let you have her and I'll just order another one for buddy so he hooked me up with that and you see how these ones work that they're butt to butt they're way f better so and then they have this uh, sleeve here I'm guessing for expansion so the bolts out much longer it allows for better heat expansion I don't f know how that shit works but uh, yeah this manifold worked tickety boo what did not work tickety boo on this engine was the medley of turbos it went through so this this turbo here with the uh <coughs> allegedly welded wastegate i mean i wasn't even giving her that hard this one blew on the way out of town so we were on the outskirts of grand prairie and uh this turbo wasn't making any boost all it was making was a bunch of weird noises so uh that was turbo number one and that was about uh oh four or five miles into the trip and then we got uh, a few racetracks done i don't remember how many uh, i think it was uh on the second no we were in Sur Saskatchewan International Raceway and then we ran the whole day there I don't remember what day that was and this turbo died so we called around while we were there and this minty prick had a bunch of old 12 valves laying around and he hooked us up with a bunch of HX35 two of them to be exact but the thing about the HX35 is they have a different exhaust housing on them so what we did <laughs> in the middle of the night actually what had happened when the second turbo had blown uh, I was eating ice cream. I got a pit. I don't think so. We're busy now. You're what? Yeah. Eating ice cream. And I really did not feel like f***ing pulling over and uh, fixing it because I was enjoying my ice cream. So we drove until that turd bowl completely f***ing died. Oh, well, it looks like Peg's got a f***ing turbo. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'll be fun. Just when we were getting on the road. This poor old hooter was just smoking, just burning all kinds of oil. I've seen diesel engines run away on their own oil before, what for a dead turbo. So I was ready for that. I had her to fourth to fifth gear and uh, ready to stall the old hooter out in case she did f off on a fella. But uh, Josh at Shade Tree Mechanical, fucking beauty. Danny at DD Speed Shop. Uh, my new friend, Minty as Tanner over at Tire Roasters Garage. That guy is fucking mint. Well, I met that fucking prick out in uh, Ottawa. That guy's fucking beauty. Just an absolute. 10 out of 10 dude well, he was there he just beat you up was there shade tree mechanical my buddy single drive big and just everybody was just thrashing on this old whore we got the turd bow off oh the manifold with the uh we actually custom built a spacer because the uh exhaust housing the way it's clocked was touching up against the manifold so we had to build a spacer and do a bunch of fiddle and then, all right, so after we burnt out the first turd bow, leaving from Isle of Mayhem, I mean, a, a couple of practice burnouts, and we burnt this one out at the Sur, I, I think it was two or three racetracks in. Well, Kyle over at Boosted Lifestyle says to me, uh, on the last day of racing, he says to my fat crippled ass, he says, uh, Peg, I can probably win the burnout here. Uh, my car will do uh, all kinds of wheel speeds, and uh, it's got twin turbo LS and all kinds of horsepower, and, uh, well, I says, hold my beer. And this turd bow met her maker. They'll make 45 psi for about, uh, oh, look at the bend in that shaft. Jesus. They'll make about 45 psi through a fifth gear burnout just long enough to win the burnout competition that I did not know I entered. The guy who gave me this was the same guy who put the whole show on, Dustin Watts, Mild of Mayhem. This guy is f***ing BEA beautiful. Just a good f***ing dude. He gave me this for winning the uh, Mild of Mayhem burnout competition. Like I was saying, Kyle of Boosted Lifestyle was uh, doing a little bit of this, and I did a little bit of this. And Stuntman over at Neutral Drop, that dirty old Cummins dumpster, won the burnout doing a uh, fifth gear jet bag f***ing <laughs> burnout. Man, it was unreal. I just had her all the way to 11 and uh gave it all the way and it boiled the turbo completely off the mill but being that i 
this one up at the cartridge. I pop this turbo off or the, the burnt one off, plug this one in, and uh, my bud Steven that uh, hit the deer in their old Dodge. Steven and Mike, they uh, hooked me up with another turbo. Uh, so we plugged, oh no, we had that one for another spare and we plugged this one on that we had. And then I continued to do way more burnouts. and then drive it, uh, what, 650 miles, 700 miles home. So uh, this motor held out phenomenal. So yeah, the drive shaft held up better than good. The rear diff held up better than good. Those are 355 with a uh, wire feed locker in her. And uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Nothing broke, nothing up other than turd bows and, uh, and the head in the trial run. Other than that, she was better than good. Hell, even my welded up power steering hose held up so since we've had that truck home she's uh she hasn't really had a light life she's uh she's been killing tires i have not driven that old 79 furred off this property without uh i mean tires dying these old skins can't really hold up to the old uh rubber foot and 12 valve combo but as i was jawing about it really sucks about the uh losing the footage that uh that was a swift kick to the d i didn't even want to edit this because uh well it sucked stop whining really sucks but i guess you guys gotta sit at the table and uh enjoy a bite off the sandwich with me because uh you guys don't get to come along and enjoy the trip that we had my buddy tanner over at uh tire roasters garage obviously dd speed shop they both did minty videos on all this they did it withered off they did a bunch of real good videos a tanner done unreal drone shots and this that and the other guys beauty so if you guys want to head over to their channels and have a gander i wouldn't blame you the chinese turbo blood was real it was just boiling down the side of the shoulder when she went that was uh that was pretty mint just a nightmare we washed it a couple times but for uh oil drippage for the track but not all was lost uh old uh, pit crew gourd there just here with my pit crew tech uh what happened to the machine just now you you oh. have the machine <laughs> one might say 5k burnout one might say that i want to watch <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> Are you gonna use this for yourself later? I'm in this. Yeah. Oh man, I'm gonna use this for myself. We need the power. He was fing mint. That minty fing prick uh, had the second camera and he did get some pretty good footage of the old Cummins dumpster doing some drag racing and some burnout. So I'll go ahead and uh, pound with the pecker that I was provided. Not much of it. And uh, dial some of them clips in here. It's gonna be mint anyway i mean at least you guys are going to see the minty parts of this thing absolutely murdering tires this is a pretty fun build and she held up pretty good for uh two and a half weeks of ranching held up a lot better than some people's brains i can tell you that microwavable
rid of their hair lips and half wits. Speaking of which, what kind of noise is that? I hope you guys uh, liked that video. It was pretty meant to make. It really did suck that uh, I lost the footage there what, from uh, being stunned and uh, losing shit. But uh, I guess that's just a lesson for next time. But uh, being that this uh, video is longer than uh, one ton Tanya was wide, or is wide, I don't know how what what state of that broad would be, but uh, can't imagine it'd be good. Willard, relax. But uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do the uh, Patreon shoutouts in the next video. Man, I love you guys. You guys are all mint. You guys are keeping this old boat afloat. But uh, yeah, this video is longer than. And I just uh, I want to go in the echo shack and pound on the old lady's pisser and uh, you know. You know how it goes. But I appreciate every single one of you minty pricks for uh, throwing some cash in the hat. You guys are minty as all uh. But you minty pricks were hounding my fat ass on the flag situation. Well, the flag situation is uh, resolved. I uh, ordered some flags. I got them in. I got them all dialed in. I asked my uh, mintiest sister-in-law if she wants to take care of the uh the flag so how it's gonna work now is uh you meant to correct and buy a flag uh my sister-in-law out in old beaver lodge there will uh send her off to you so how it's gonna work is she looked into it and for some fiddle reason uh, in Frostbackistan, if you order a flag shipping is, is more and if you order a flag in america's the uh shipping's way less so 75 percent of you meant to according to my uh, lube dube analytics from the americas anyway so uh that sounds like a good deal i don't remember what we're charging whether it was 20 or 25 beans but uh that's in kanakistan so that's like 15 cents american and uh plus the cost of shipping which i don't think it's that much to ship her down to the states i think all together with the uh shipping and whatnot for a flag to go down in america it's like 30 bucks 35 bucks american so if you guys want to buy one i'll put a uh, link in the uh description or the ship talker i uh, haven't figured that out yet but you guys are able to click that go in buy a flag and uh the sister-in-law will uh ship her off to you once again thank you pricks very much and uh until next video keep out your Who made this goddamn shit? Willard's wife.